Okay, so what I've decided to do is to test the the coupler. So I gotta do the separatron, which is uh, I think it's under utility. No, it's under propulsion for sure, right? Yeah, so it's this one. So basically, you put this, you know, like uh, like on the side of a rocket to get it to go away from your rocket as it's separating. And we're gonna do the radial decoupler. Uh, at the same time. So this is how it works. The radial decoupler is at 6,900 meters, and then this one's at 6,300. So we have roughly the same spot at about 6,900 we could do it, but we have to be going uh, anywhere from 160 meters per second to 460 for that one. So we need to be going about 300 is what it looks like that we're going to want to do. So how are we going to do this? Well, if we want to test them all out, uh, because we're, we want to do a radial and we want to do the separatron. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to um, put that on there. And we're just going to get a basic engine going. So let's do that one. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the radial decoupler, like so. I'm going to pair it up like that. And then we're going to take, I don't know, something that... Uh, what, what kind of aerodynamic stuff do we have? We have... Yeah, we have a cone. Okay, so what we can do is we can take this and go... Actually, could probably do that. Mm, how well is that going to work, though? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. And then we're going to take the Sepatron, which is in propulsion. And I'm going to actually... Oops, that's the wrong way. Like that. So I'm going to attach it like that. So that basically what it's going to do is it's going to uh, fire off and then launch it kind of in a spin away from our craft. So that's kind of what we're going for here. So those, uh, we want both of those to fire at the same time. So that'll happen um, on its own little thing. But I need to have the engine down at the bottom. And again, we're only going, going to try to go at least about 300 meters per second so we need to accelerate quite quickly so that's kind of the goal here and then of course we need a parachute in order to land properly so we'll put that in its own thing like so and i think this is going to work i installed the universal storage mod i'll show you guys that when we actually make a decent craft but for the most part i think this will work uh, and we'll get two of our things done right away. I think so. Let me just make sure that there's nothing else that I should have on here. It looks good. I think potentially uh, this on there would... Because here's, here's my concern. is This is not going to be aerodynamic, I don't think. But uh, I guess we'll... I guess we'll find out. Let's, let's launch and see how it goes. Alrighty, three... Two, one. So far, so good. Uh, I want to watch my speed. I only want to go 300 meters per second. So we're going to pull this back a bit. And a little bit more. All right, and now we just need to reach our altitude and we should be fine. But I do want to keep an eye on our speed that we're going. Looks like we're just fine. 6,000, let's get to 7,000 meters, and I think that should be what it, we need in order to test this. So, uh, that, that'll work. Did we get it? We got both of them. Perfect. Also, that went nuts. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, yeah, we got that. Cool. We'll just trash that, and we got that. Cool. Now, I could attempt something here. I could attempt to retrieve all of this. So, let's burn my way away from that and let's just kill off the rest of our fuel so what this is going to do is it's going to get us away from the spaceport and it'll also get rid of the fuel that we have here so then i should be able to pull this down like that and hit my parachute did it work deploy all right and that will slow us down quite rapidly and we should be able to land this, uh, hopefully without anything exploding. But, of course, we'll find out. You know, from space, 
Those are some really good looking clouds. I just realized that. Oh man. The graphical mods are real and they look so good. I also like how you can kind of tell that it is a layer floating above the surface. It's a good detail that they have there. This might be a bit dicey. We're coming in over the mountains. It's kind of hard to see through all these amazing clouds, but we are definitely coming in over the mountains, which is going to make it a lot more difficult for us to land this thing without losing anything. Now, the reason I'm trying to land it with the fuel tank and the engine is because the more of the, the ship that you recover, uh, basically the more money you get back. So it's going to be really good if we can get all of these parts. I should have considered putting extra parachutes on, but if we could do it with just this, then awesome. This is the moment of truth right here is once this actually deploys. Oh, which it hasn't yet. Oh, that was a little bit of a butt pucker. And we are coming in on a slope, which again was my concern here. And we're going pretty fast. I think the engine may explode. Oh, yeah. Oh, and so did the fuel tank. But we recovered that. Yeah. Can I like roll this around like uh, ooh, stop the roll? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, crew report, right? And then I'm going to EVA. Uh, get get off that. Get just, just get off that. EVA report. There we go. Should also take a surface sample. Boom. Nice. Easy science. Let's get back on there. It's bored. Let's recover the vessel. That should give us enough money to do plenty of things and we have 45 science which is pretty much exactly what we needed for something here so what we want to get is this oh perfect and this is gonna be amazing so we're gonna research that that gets us fairings now what fairings do is it covers the top of the craft and this allows you to do plenty of things but for the most part, it's an aerodynamic gain. So when you're launching, you're not getting extra drag off of all the pieces you're putting on there. These are all tests, and honestly, I don't want to test anything at the moment. I think we should achieve orbit. So let's create something that can do just that. So this will be our basic starting structure here. It's a bit of a lander. I'm going to have... Uh, you know, little extra parachutes for slowing down purposes. But what we're going to do is we're going to have two of these science juniors. Now, this is one of the new mods that I got. So this is universal storage. What it does is it puts like a little core down. And, and what I can do essentially is attach these to it. So if we face it the right direction, like so. Got it. Okay. So it'll put this on. And what we can do is we can open it up. So we can put plenty of things in here. But most importantly, we put things like this, right? So we can rotate that around. Obviously, this one's a bit small for it, but you get the idea. Like, uh, you know, little, oops, little things to put your your batteries in is really important. And what this does is it keeps it off the whole of the ship. So if I close this up, like so, you can see that it's not going to cause any drag and it's not going to get ripped off too, which is also quite important. So I'm going to take this core and I'm going to separate these and I'm going to put the core in the middle here and then I'm going to put that on the bottom and I'm just going to fill four of these up with batteries and potentially other things. I don't really see anything else. I mean, we can have a hard drive in there. We don't really need that because we're not storing data like that. So we're just going to put some batteries in. And there's what that looks like with the middle part done like that. It looks way better, you know, it looks a lot more like a, you know, like a functioning spaceship as opposed to a ton of just random crap hanging off of it. What we can also do actually, and what we should do, should zoom in a little bit here. And this is when it's gonna get a little funky. So we want uh, some of our life support stuff, right? We don't necessarily need it at the moment, but we can put it in there. Uh, or actually, we could probably just do one of these. Now, what I can do is you could pull this out and oh, it's going to be a little confusing. There we go. Much better. So <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of a strange thing. So I'm going to open up the bay doors and then I'm just going to turn the interior off. Uh, no, I can leave it on. I think it still works either way. So that one was oxygen because I have it uh, neatly retextured here. So this is water. So what we do is we get it kind of like whoop, in the middle here. We flip it and then we do this with it. There we go. So there's our water. And then we're going to kind of take this and just put that at an angle. 
and then we can close the doors. So not only do we have life support, but we also have power in each of these. And it's important to try to keep them balanced too. So like having the uh, similar weighted things um, around the outside of it. This is simply just because when you're launching, especially with the Ferrum Aerospace, it, it changes the physics significantly enough that if you have a more balanced ship you're going to benefit from that so the more that you can keep weight distributed evenly throughout your craft here it's going to be much better we got our last canister in there and that's containing the the waste products or will contain the waste products that is the food water and oxygen so we should be good as far as all that is concerned now we can start kind of building more of a lander approach, uh, starting with some uh, landing gear. So one of the things I did here is I switched the parachutes to the bottom, uh, just in case this bit decides to break as we're doing re-entry and we launch our chutes. I've had it happen before where it breaks in the center and it splits your entire thing apart. You don't want that. So I put the uh, goo canisters up there and that should work much better. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to find a decoupler like so, and then I'm gonna do this. Now I don't need to put the decoupler there, I just like to for aesthetic looks uh, when it's actually happening. But what you do is you take the, the fairing now. So we have the egg-shaped fairing and the cone fairing. I like the cone. We'll do this, and there's two of them, and it just covers it up. So the procedural fairings, what they do is they will uh, do it automatically. There is a mod that has fairings in it that doesn't do it automatically, and you just need to uh, you know, know, know the right size of what you're putting on. I prefer this one because it saves me a lot of time. Now what I'm going to do is take the decoupler and do that. Now I have two decouplers there, so it will basically go this decoupler, right? So this one will break. Then we have our fairings. So as you see here, that one, fairings, and then the one inside, and then we have the parachute. So this is all set up correctly. What the heck is that? I don't know, but it's floating out there and I don't want to click on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this up now and we're going to create the rest of our rocket, which plans to get this into orbit and then back again. Okay, so this should be more than enough. We have two boosters, right? Those are going to launch. Then this engine is going to. We need to put that there. So this engine will launch. Uh, that will get us pretty far into the atmosphere, these two boosters alone. This one will go. It will get us into orbit. And then that, uh, okay, so these need to be there. Okay, that engine goes. Then we have this center decoupler, which puts us into that engine there. And then we have that decoupler there. So we're all set up and good to go. So we're gonna call this the, uh, the orbiter at Mark One. So that's just, it's a pretty easy craft. We're not trying to go anywhere. We're just trying to get into orbit and fulfill that you know, major contract. I also made sure that I have the aerodynamic stuff on the top just to make sure that it goes a little bit better. I'm double checking, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Doesn't look like we are. So the last thing we need to do is get a new person in here. Jebediah, I trust you, but I'm pretty sure that uh, Burfree, Burfree is gonna do it. He's gonna be our first Kerbin to orbit. Now, you you got to imagine, for the most part, that the Synethians are incredibly happy that he has taken it upon himself to volunteer to be the first one into orbit around Kerbin, but he is also a bit of a sacrificial pig.